Good morning, good morning. Oh, hang on, I can't see that side window. That's better. Here we go. Whoa, lovely bright sunshine. Windows up. Third gear. We're still driving past my field. There we go. I'm a firm believer that if you're not in third gear by the time you get past your property, it's not big enough. Oh dear, I'm gonna have to do something, that's better. Oh. Right, okay, I'm driving safely now. Oh, I'm sorry about the uh, lack of uh, camera footage over the past few videos. It's just a case of uh, my chip and the camera is, it rolls the footage off after every six or seven days and that goes, you know, quicker than you think, so. So by the time I come to, uh, let me just, uh, my Mark one window retractor, mirror retractor working. There we go. There's passing places on this road, but you never use them. It's like he didn't use this one here, and I didn't use that one there, so. It's a real case of who's got the biggest cojones on this road in the morning. pile of wood over there. Belongs to Pfizer's. I mean must be thousands of tons of wood over there. All tree trunks. They've got a wood burning uh, electricity generator on the Sandwich Discovery Park. Goodness knows why. I mean talk about it. it's, a, it's the reverse of carbon capture. It's a carbon release electricity generator. You have to be a bit careful because these bloody everyone's got a massive car and they look to see. Everyone's driving an SUV. Anyway, how are you anyway? I hope you're well. It is of course another lovely day in paradise. It's uh, gonna be 19, 18 degrees today. Probably might even be 21 in Margate. So, I am, as usual, late. So I've come the fast way today. The dual carriage way. way. So, uh, what's the news? What's the news where you are? in the middle of the vaccine rollout and you know having had one of the first and worst or the, just the worst way of handling the vaccine and cause you know <clears throat> such a tremendous loss of privacy and security and liberty economic activity incomes lifestyles and been rewarded with one of the highest, if not the highest death toll per capita. I think largely, I mean, underlying it all is the fact that the, we, we have a tremendously inefficient health system. A health system that is not fit for purpose. <clears throat> that is only good at uh, wasting taxpayers' money and doesn't deliver the uh, health gains that that sort of investment would if used in other ways. Um, they're trying to rehabilitate the situation, you know, don't, you know, to pay no attention to the death toll behind the curtain. Just look at how brilliantly the vaccine rollout is going. And uh, to be honest, the vaccine rollout is not 
going very well at all. I mean, it's not fair to say that it's not going well. It is going well. But, but usually, you know, we just have to sort of take pride in the fact that we have achieved something and ignore the fact that we haven't achieved what we could have achieved. I mean, to give you like a few examples, my uh, vaccine, uh, I was told to go to, uh, I live near Aylsham. I was told to drive to Sheerness, which is an hour away, only to be told that there are no vaccines and that I should drive back to Aylsham because all the vaccines had gone to Aylsham. So I had my first vaccine at uh, uh, Aylsham. Then when uh, all, all these vaccines are booked online, so on many occasions, I and the staff have booked online and had our appointments cancelled, just been told that those appointments are no longer appropriate. Um, no more so than when, when getting the second, uh, the booster dose. And the booster dose is, uh, we, we all made appointments to get our second doses, booster doses. And then what happened was Lou turned up for her second dose and was told that she was she was three days too early and that the rules stated that nobody can get a second booster dose until X day, something like six weeks after the first one. And the system had uh, made her an appointment and, and you know the system is well aware, this online system is well aware that it's uh, a second dose because it says uh, you know, click here to book your second dose and it tells you when all your appointments were and when all the ones that were cancelled were and it knows you've had your first dose so you then make an appointment for the second dose and she then drove all the way from Ramsgate for which is again 45 minutes down to uh, Folkestone to be told that she was three days early. And this is a, a facility that's got, that has 638 appointments available when we booked her second dose. And she was one of those 638 and was told that uh, due to some rule book, bureaucracy, uh, that uh, she couldn't have a dose. So, and you're not telling me that they uh, that all of those 638 doses were, were used up that day. You know, they have, they must have had 638 doses available because they were offering 638 appointments. So don't tell me that they've got more appointments than they've got doses because they can't, they can't run like that. They must have had the vaccine there and she had a slot and they had the vaccine for her if she had been eligible. And uh, let's just put my wing mirror out again. But no, they, she's three days too early, so it's uh, so sorry, you know, just drive, drive away, you know. And the problem then is that she then goes on the back of the queue. So they cancel her appointment, and then she then has to make another appointment and so she then has to go to the end of the queue for the appointments. So she, it's not like she can make an appointment for three days, or they'll make her an appointment for three days. Basically, it's, it, it's no, computer says no type. Uh, anyway, at the vaccine center, they said to her that it, it should have been explained to her that it was too soon for her to have the second dose. Now, this, uh, when you're cocking things up badly, um, you're, you will make use of the passive tense, you know, you should have been told, or you should have known, or uh, it, it should have been clear to you, without saying who 
should have made it clear or who should have told you, you know. And the NHS makes extensive use of the passive tense, you know. No, no, I can't do this. I'm sorry you didn't know that. But, you know, that, but I just, I can't do it, you know. It's sort of a typical Jobsworth mentality. And, of course, the thing that should have told her was the computer system. The computer system said it should have excluded any appointments which were before the deadline for the second dose. But it didn't. That's the point at which it should have happened, and it didn't. But, of course, uh, you can't get in touch with anyone. You know, you can't contact anyone. You can't say... Uh, there's no helpline or... <laughs> you know, your anyway so then of course the rest of the staff had to cancel their appointments because we worked out the difference between Lou's first date and Lou's last date you know or the first possible date for the second dose and we we realized that we were all within the danger zone so we all so then we all cancelled our appointments and had to rebook all of our appointments and Oh dear. And the other thing I learned is that um, in America, the dentists are giving the vaccine. In America, they've rolled out, I think uh, Joe Biden promised 100 million vaccinations in the first 100 days. Uh, and he's, he's got up to 100 million after 50 days. And so now he's promising 200 million within 100 days, which is his sort of uh, what they call a stretch target, you know, when something's going really well and you exceed your target at an early stage, you, you stretch your target, see if you can do more. And so, and I think the fact that uh, they're utilizing everybody to give injections who can, who's ever handled a needle, I think is an excellent idea, and it's. But over here, you see, the, the NHS is very uh, protectionist. They won't let anyone, uh, you know, over here, you know, to take blood, you have to have be a phlebotomist uh, to give an, an injection. You have to have had a course on vaccinating. Uh, they, oh, our technician who's quite public spirited and probably not too busy at the moment to do a bit of a, to get a second job, decided to volunteer to assist with the vaccination process. And we're only talking about standing on the door and showing people where to park and just generally marshalling, light, light marshalling duties, you know. Uh, and he volunteered two months ago. They've never called him up. You know, they've never uh, it, it was all a sham. It's all a sham. All this idea, yes, yes, we're gonna we're gonna they're gonna have this army of volunteers who's gonna help do everything. No, oh, the NHS doesn't want that. Last thing they want is a load of people from the outside coming in, seeing how they do things and uh, and possibly uh, you know being extremely efficient, showing them up. <laughs> so, you're not, you know, if you're not in the club, you ain't getting in. It reminds me of when I was working for Bowater and uh, we were the students and we were given the job of cleaning some machines. The machines had a uh, a big, a big vertical slide that used to go up and down. And uh, no, don't make your own jokes. And uh, it used to have an automatic uh, grease injector, so that it never uh, ran dry. And so after a while, this grease that was injecting in, into the slide used to build up because obviously they they set the injector slightly too fast. You know to be on the safe side and so once they sort of neutralized the machines cut the plug off 
uh, people were sent inside the machines to um, with a, with sacks of uh, rags to clean these machines up. And it was only a case of uh, wiping grease off and then getting a new rag and wiping more grease off. And uh, because these machines were, were oily, they used to polish up lovely. Anyway, there was a bunch of students, two or three of us, and within a couple of days, we'd uh, degreased all the machines. Oh my God, we got in, we got hell for doing that. Because the, we, we got taken aside and the bloke said, one of the engineers came over and he said to me, look, you know, what, what are you playing at? What are you, what do you think you're doing? You know, you're, <laughs> he says, it's all right for you, you bloody brain boxes. You're on your way to university, become masters of the universe. He said, all these poor people working in this factory, they're stuck here. He said, they're going to be here for the rest of their life. He said, the last thing they want is some bloody bright spark coming in here and inventing new and, and better ways of doing things and just generally being 10 times faster than, than anyone else. He says, you're, you're not making any friends here, you know. He said, just for, for Christ's sake, slow down. You know, take a couple of weeks to do the job, not a couple of days. <coughs> well, it was a bit late by then. <laughs> We'd already done it. <laughs> so... But I'll never forget that, you know, that you assume that people are uh, working in good faith, that they're doing the job to the best of their ability. <laughs> but in fact, quite often, it, that is not the case. And the other uh, thing they used to do in that factory was to routinely declare that the machines were um, not, were offline, you know, for a lot, for a long time for long periods of time because um, their bonus was judged on the number of items they produced uh, considering the amount of time that the machine had been running and if you produced 50% of all the items that you could possibly have done in a week and the machine was only running for a day then they used to ignore that mathematical impossibility and say, what an effing genius. He's, he's got half the production out of 20% of the working. And the machine was broken for 80% of the time. So anyone who came in and, and reported the figures accurately was very quickly told to add on a couple of hours a day of downtime. Otherwise, they're, they're, they're not going to get their bonus. So, you know, you can't even trust the figures. <laughs> All the figures were bonus, bogus. The bonus figures were bogus. And, uh, all right. Thank you very much. It's funny, isn't it, the lessons you learn. The lessons you learn in the workplace early on uh, stand you in good stead as time goes by. There we are. Well, perfectly right. I've got to rush. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.